This is Erin Boyer with Compassionate Pet Solutions. I'm going to talk about how to introduce a new puppy to your resident cat. The most important thing that when dealing with cats is to remember they are very sensitive to stress. Something I like to do with any time I've got a cat that's going to be in a stressful situation is use pheromones. Pheromones, like the Good Behavior Collar, is a pheromone collar you can put around their neck and a feel away spray. It's basically a calming kind of pheromone that mimics the pheromones that mom gives off when they're kittens. It kind of helps calm them down. I like to get this collar on the cat or spray some, some flea away around before you even start the introductions. The first step of the introductions is going to be a closed, basically solid barrier. At first, you don't want the cat to be able to see the dog, you don't want the dog to be able to see the cat. You just want them to basically have a solid barrier where they can sniff each other but not actually interact. Once you have established that that seems to be okay and you've put some toys and some treats on either side of the door, then you can move until where you actually have a situation where you switch rooms. You take the cat and put it where the dog is and take the dog and put it where the cat is so they can smell each other without actually touching. Then you're going to move to the baby gate. The baby gate is basically so that they can see each other, they can sniff each other, but they're not going to be able to actually physically interact. It's important that the dog or the puppy in this situation has something that they can be distracted by. So you want them to be playing with their calm toys or having a raw hide to chew on, something so they're not physically staring at the cat or barking at the cat. That way you can kind of encourage the cat to approach the gate. And you can do that with using things like feather toys and you can play in front of the gate. You can use cat treats and you can use cat food and you can put it on either side of the gate. That way you got positive associations between the cat and the dog. Once you've decided that it's okay for them to be off in actual physical contact, you can use something like the leash. The leash is a good thing to use because basically once you let the dog out, you're going to want the dog to be on the leash in order to have some kind of control of his interactions with the cat. The dog needs to be on the leash or it needs to be tied to somewhere in the room in order to prevent that the dog from chasing the cat. Once you think you can trust them, then you can let them off. And you want to basically still be present. You don't want the, the cat to have interactions with the dog when you're like You basically just want them to be able to explore each other and be around each other without having kind of negative reactions. The cat and the dog can kind of walk around and sniff each other, but it's important that you monitor their access. It's also very important that the cat have what's called a safe room. The safe rooms are basically an area where the cat is allowed to be, but the dog is not. Oftentimes you use baby gates for this, something the cat can jump over or go under, and the dog is not allowed in. And that's important to maintain throughout their relationship, to have some area where the cat can get away from the dog and there isn't any kind of interference there. And it's never recommended to keep them together or left, leave them alone when you're not there. Because sometimes you never know what's going to happen and you don't want to come home to find some kind of altercation has occurred.